Good morning, East Hampton. Um, I'm Nicole Estrapel, and I am very, with lots of gratitude, your mayor. Our special guest today is Mo Bellevue from the East, Greater East Hampton Chamber of Commerce. She's our fearless executive director. Um, and I always have to throw this in, and the co-founder and host of uh, The Art of Risk. Uh, just a wonderful uh, day for women professionally and just, it's a great day. I, I had to put that plug in, Mo. Um, I'm glad so, that you did. And it, there's a slight yeah. change going forward. So okay. Women in the Art of Risk what is, um, has been uh, retired, that theme and that concept. And we are moving forward with She Leads. So stay tuned. stay tuned for more information regarding that. Evolution. I love it. Great. Um, and Mo's also going to give us an update of, of just like what's going on in Chamber of Commerce in, in our area, but also around sentiments and, and what she's hearing and also tools and information um, that she's sharing on the Chamber's website and a virtual uh, assistant. I also have some questions from uh, the public that I got via text and email over the last week. And at the end, it will be a free-for-all. Ask any kind of questions or clarifications that you would like. If I don't have the answer, I'm going to get you an answer. And also, um, let Mo and I know if uh, you have a concern or need some help in the business community or perceive something our business community, our local economy really needs. We would love to hear it because we're always looking for collaborations, but we're starting to to get some money in for business relief funds. We uh, were awarded $30,000 yesterday by the Attorney General, and all of those monies will go with small grants to existing um, businesses. It's not something to support some within City Hall. All of that money goes to local businesses, small businesses. So we'll have more details on that. Um, the other thing I wanna quickly mention for help is that um, East, uh, East Hampton City Arts has uh, started an artist relief fund. You can go to their website or to the city's website, easthamptonma.gov, and then click on arts and culture, and you will get all the information about that, some financial assistance to help our creatives um, across East Hampton. And the last thing I will make sure everybody hears about, and I would encourage them to reach out to the Community Preservation Act members the board, they are considering, as well as your city councilors, a $300,000 rent relief fund for East Hampton residents. Um, sorely needed, it comes out of our CPA housing fund. It's not money that we have to raise, and it will help renters who just really need some support. We wanna care and help everyone we possibly can. Please uh, put your support forward to your members of city council and the CPA board. That said, I'm going to hand uh, the spotlight or pass the spotlight over to Mo um, about just her perspectives and what's going on from the Chamber of Commerce. So since we received um, your guidance on closing um, you know, of non-essentials, uh, my uh -huh. um, assistant and I have been working from home. So we're, we've been working from home, we are home, um, and we have been fielding and vetting and trying to um, bring down into a concise format all of the information that, that I'm getting bombarded yeah. with regarding um, programming, resources, and all that sort of stuff. And it's really almost, it's almost on a daily basis that I, I'm, we're putting that stuff, that stuff out yeah. for folks because it's so important. Yeah. So that's what we've been doing. That's what we've been focusing our time on. And where are you getting that resource? Like, so one, what is, uh, what's the URL for your website? Just make sure everybody knows. It's easthamptonchamber.org. Okay. And, and you're updating have, it. Go ahead. Yeah, we update it, um, as it as, as it needs to be updated. We have a um, resource, a business resource page. So yeah. all of the information that we put out on a daily basis, if there's an addition, a new link, a new PDF, or what have you, regarding yeah. the different programming. So from, you know, I'm, we, uh, I'm on weekly calls with NEMA every week, 
and we get updates from them every night. So the following morning, I go through mm -hmm. like that and I make sure that that information is, is getting out to everybody. Cool. Um, I do a specific, um, because we are a, uh, a member owned nonprofit, so I have my members and that's how, that's how, what supports the chamber and the work that we do. Yeah. Um, but so I have a member specific um, email that goes out every day. Yeah. And then I have a, for our broader uh, mailing list, which is I think a couple thousand um, folks are on that mailing list. And you don't need to be a member to be on that mailing list. You can go to the website, okay. easthamptonchamber.org and you can sign up for that. And we, and that, all that same information gets put into that as well so that you know rising tides can lift all these boats yes. so um that's what we have been doing so we get our information from mima we look to your information as well your situation reports that you put out mm -hmm. and we have a link to that um and anything that comes out via um the health department planning anything anything that's yeah Relevant and specific. I'm, I'm really mm -hmm. working hard so that I'm not flooding everybody's inbox with, with noise yeah. and with um, uh, random information. And, and I really rely on specifically the SBA, the state, um, yeah. your website for, um, and I watch the, I watch the governor's um, press release, press conferences every day too. Just mm -hmm. I'm on top of that, but, um, you know, I really kind of filter out all of this other random information coming from random sources. Yeah, I think I that's really, where they're getting their information. Right. I, I think that's really important. And it's one of the reasons why I asked, um, there is so much information out there and it is not vetted. It's not from official services. Um, uh, sources and we're already hearing about scams. I mean, unemployment checks this week are likely to be delayed so they can deal with a, an unemployment scam, a yep. scam that is so broad that everyone's unemployment check may be delayed. Right. Um, and we just got notified of that yeah, uh, mid afternoon. And I, yeah. um, so I made sure that that went out and I'm going to, we'll be doing another mailing of that because there's links um, that you can yeah. file a report and all that sort of stuff. So we're hopefully we'll be getting that out before noon time today. I just find your e-glass very informative and I can trust it. Thanks. So, That's you know, and if, right, we hear things and we're trying to put out a one pager every other day around municipal matters. A lot of times we, we go and we look at, you know, all, all boats, right? Rising tides of, we look at the chamber's um, e-blast and say, okay, they're, they're doing this too, or this is this link to back something up. And I can't encourage the public to really um, be careful and mindful about something that you're reading, um, really understand what the source is and not just the source that an article or post might say is the source, um, dig a little deeper. And I think the chamber yeah. is a great website, the city website, mass.gov, CD, um, gov and John Hopkins has just really awesome scientific data dashboard. It's, it's really yeah. something else. Yeah. Um, it's really important to me that, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not fancy. There's not a lot of pictures and fluff. I'm just trying to, this is what you need because everybody is so, yeah. you know, over stimulated and over, yeah. you know, overload. And, um, I don't want anybody, and, and also, you know, members, or if you're getting our newsletter, and if there's anybody that you feel that would benefit from this information, or it's important for them to know, share it, please. Yeah. Are you posting information on, on your um, Facebook? I know you guys are working from home. So uh, the Facebook, the Chambers uh, Facebook page is also yeah. um, pushing out that good stuff. Yeah. That good so help. it's a tap. Yeah. So we do the, um, we do our general mailing. We do our member specific general mailing. Um, then we make sure that all of those links and PDFs and things are on our web page. And then all of that goes out on Facebook too. Great. Yeah. So let, um, what are you hearing from local businesses and what concerns you're hearing or, or what's working? I've, I've gotten a lot of concerns about, um, 
the payroll protection uh, program and what happens on June 30th. Is that a concern for folks here in East Hampton or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, um, you know, concern regarding um, forgivability. And there's some new information that just went out over the past couple of days in that process. Your folks are going to need to apply to get considered for uh, forgivability. So I, I'm, it's really important that that's, I, I try to make that as clear as possible because it's not just something, yeah. oh, I have this now and it's gonna be forgiven. That's not the case. So gotcha. folks are concerned about that. They're concerned about, mm -hmm. um, you know, they had folks, they had laid folks off or furloughed people. And then they yeah. then through the course of this, they received their PPP, they got approved and they received it. They've called people back. And now for one reason or another, perhaps these people are not coming back. They're concerned about, well, um, you know, I have to move on. I have to, these people are important to me, but if yeah. I, I need her. So if I hire somebody and now their spot isn't available anymore, and what's that mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In regards to my uh, liability, I guess, for lack of a better word, I hate to use that word. But. I mean, what's your general sense? And I, I, I know, I, I'm not sure you're surveying or, or whatnot. Um, I mean, how are people feeling as far as like confidence in building, I mean, in businesses and interacting with businesses and their own health or, or the business employees and owners health? I mean, are you hearing about that or if it's more very I'm fiscally minded? Uh, well, I think that it's people are very, very um, wanting to get back to business. This is what they do. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's their purpose in life. And this is gives them purpose and meaning and drive. Um, so they want to get back to that. But yeah. I also am hearing that there is concern about um, wanting to do it in a safe manner. Yeah. And I've also gotten feedback from folks about um, their staff being concerned. You know, they know that their organization, their place of business is following um, the guidelines that are put out by the state, um, the general guidelines that everyone needs to follow, and then the sector specific guidelines. Right. Um, so they know that they're, they're doing that, but then um, they're concerned about the general public um, holding up their end of that. So having their masks on, having, right. you know, so there's concern around that. Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah, I, I, I mean, my, um, talking to business owners um, a little bit exactly that is that they feel like they can, the, they've gotten the general guidance, they can get a hold of our health agent, our health department here for local interpretation, they can educate their employees. And, and honestly, the one question I hear more and more is when someone walks into my business without a mask or face covering, what do I do? Yeah. Um, and we're trying to put a little more certainty, like one, two, three steps of that. Um, right now, what I've been telling folks and um, is, you know, this is, just like um, what we're used to. It's no, no shoes, no shirt, no face covering, no service. Like that's the mindset, but there is this public education process. And of course, if you're a business, your customer service, right, needs to be right on and you want to welcome people. And, and it is, I just keep hearing it's a concern about, but, but how am I welcoming people if somebody walks in without a face covering? Right. You know, or and what's people who, who can't. Yeah. And what's their enforcement responsibility? Right, I agree. So. Yeah, I, I think it comes down to what we're, we're getting from the state so far, but I have asked for more guidance around enforcement. Is it more just a condition, I'm sorry, it's a condition of service or, mm -hmm. um, and it's up to individual businesses around in employees, I mean, I'm sorry, around customers, but not employees. So I, I, yeah. I think, you know, they're we also, need, yeah, go ahead, mom. I was just going to say, they're also concerned, um, and waiting to see, you know, is the general public, and I know that folks want to get out and about, and, and yeah. of course, getting back to whatever normal will be, but 
um, some of the feedback that I've gotten is how much, how eager really will everybody be? Um, yeah. And willing, I think they're eager, but how tentative are they going to be? Yeah. Right. And that's natural, right? Right. No, I, I, I agree. And we had, um, you know, with the, the, the little bit of the opening in phase one, um, I mean, just the construction, big construction jobs in town, the, um, the concerns that both the developer, the contractors and the workers had about wanting to come back to work, but the multi levels of, of safety planning, um, you know, it's, it's cumbersome. I mean, yes. it's necessary, but it's cumbersome. And, yes. and I do, when you get to retail and you get to restaurants, I do wonder how that's going to work for folks. How well, and I've also out. heard too that, and I've also seen um, some of the smaller businesses deciding to uh, hold off yeah. because of what they're responsible for now, yeah. you know, as far yeah. as having all of the PPE and the sanitation and yeah. And how long that actually, you know, takes every day. Yeah. So, and it's so big... just to kind of jump to another um, uh, topic around this that, that I've heard, um, it was actually one of the, the questions, um, but we're kind of going right that way. Liability. So when yeah. you're talking about concern, I mean, right. the, have you heard anything from insurance companies or from different business sectors about a safe harbor or, you know, un, you know, um, Goodness, no. if somebody gets sick, right, and you can't trace back, but they happen to be at your your business. I mean, anything you're hearing out there around liability and the contact tracing back to any one place? Well, obviously, I, it, it, it potentially could um, uh, create some sort of apprehension. Mm -hmm you know, general perception, yeah. Yeah. Um, which, you know, who knows, but, but I have not heard anything regarding um, safe harbor or anything like that. I think it, it's, it, it's, it's such a big question and, it, and yeah. not all of the, not yeah. all of the questions have or have, have been or right. have an answer. No, I was reading where um, employees in essential businesses like the grocery stores, um, are asserting their rights to file on I'm um, sorry, worker comp claims. Um, with oh, I haven't COVID heard that. Related. Yeah, that, that's just coming up. And there, and there are a couple of things in the legislature that I think have just been introduced of, of around what happens to make sure that employees get care, but it necessarily doesn't go back to an employer. Um, and, and how do we take care of people, right, who are sick? It's not right. about denial of care, but but how do we make sure it doesn't crush businesses and and that's yeah. i mean for me that's the second most difficult thing to to figure out next to schools education you know i i think that that's a a, a big thing um so is the chamber doing any online you see all these virtual events and zoom calls or and and what like we're doing now um right. is the chamber kind of just or i shouldn't say kind of just putting the information out there or that are virtual, how could members of the, the chamber reach out to each other? So we, um, we have postponed all of our programming through 2020. Mm -hmm. um, well, through the, through the end of September, I should say. And then the last quarter is tentative, depending yeah. on how that all shakes out. Um, yeah. And we have been doing a little bit of, of Zoom offerings here and there, but um, mm -hmm. frankly, if people are just, you know, they, they have their, um, you know, their, their daily Zoom eight mm -hmm. hours, yeah. and um, it's, it's Zoom overload. Mm -hmm. We're fine. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. yep, so that's, so it, it, we, 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 we tried doing some of that in the very beginning, but it was, um, that time has passed. Let's just, <laughs> yeah. you know, I and mean, we have a few offerings here and there and, um, but it's, yeah, we it's, are, it's mostly, um, answering questions, um, email, phone calls, you know, um, mm -hmm. um, day to day. 
Yeah. Yeah. And we, just, it's just taking the temperature, you know, just no yeah. pun intended, but you know, you know, checking in on folks to see how they're doing and what they're thinking. We, um, across the departments, um, I mean, we're in city hall, we're the, the municipal government is operating, but public buildings are still close to the public. And, um, but one thing we hear across all the departments as we interact with people, either through Zoom or email or phone calls, is getting the word out, you know, around what's happening in the business community, what's happening in the government. And certainly the virtual town halls are a part of it. And the, um, the COVID situation um, reports that City Hall does and yours, but it is, it, it's concerning to me. And we were trying to push out you know, resources like your um, website and the email blast for the public as much as possible to get um, solid um, vetted information to, to folks about what's happening and, and maybe even more importantly, what's not happening. Um, you know, and, and then I'm not saying it's not okay to know what's not happening, but, but to, to just have to sit with the unknown rather filling that void with misinformation is, has been a struggle. Right, and I've I've been spending um, a lot of time also just helping helping coaching people through processes, you know, yeah. so helping to connect them to the SBA when they have a specific yeah. question and they're not able to find that answer. Um, yeah. So I'm happy to do that for folks. That's I feel mm -hmm. that's the mission right now, you know, Great. and and helping encouraging people to um, take those steps, do what you need to do. You know, you, if you need to sign up for a program, sign up for a program. That's why they're here. Right. That's right. what they're for. There's for yeah. you to do that. So we've started, um, or I've, out of my office, I just put out the revised press release um, yesterday. We have that three layer approach. Um, and one is the reimbursement and grants um, task force, which is internal um, and looking for an, an attorney general's. Um, grant for the 30,000 was one, our first fruitful effort, our first success, um, but also tracking those. I mean, you talk about processes, figuring out what FEMA will pay for or not, and then how do we match with our local dollars to get the FEMA money. So we've started, we've started that with our treasurer heading up that work group. Um, and then we have the reopening committee um, that is uh, uh, co-chaired um, by um, well, Jenna, I'm getting better, uh, David, um, from Bank ESB, and Emily Russo, who's our assistant personnel director with a great group of community folks to, to really take that temperature, right? And say, what do you need from your city government? Or what do you know that's out there? Or what do you need to know about? And they're gonna develop a survey that we can keep pushing off, something really short. Um, and and I, I say, I'm gonna say this over and over again, because we need to get, once the survey is together in the next month, we need to get um, out there this link so everybody can answer it, so we know where we go for grants. And then the last one is around innovation and pivoting business models in town, Blueprints East Hampton. And um, Casey Corsello has accepted the coordinator position there. We're working with the National League of Cities and, and looking at how we can help businesses pivot or transition to the next, you know, to the next version iteration of, of their business or services that they offer. Yep. Um, but it's, it is, um, it seems that it goes very slow and then all of a sudden goes very fast and you know, you're trying to, to leverage and take, um, take advantage of, of what you can to, to keep strong, to keep right. strong. Um, Absolutely. Um, it's, a, let's see, it's 10 24. Ryan, do we have questions? Um, that, uh, that folks want to ask or... Yes, or just now chat. one coming in to the chat. Uh, Peter Marks would like to know, what are your expectations as the mayor of East Hampton for the next fiscal year, given the significant revenue declines for local municipalities in the state? Yeah. Um, so the expectation is I submitted, um, first I submitted a balanced budget back in May, May 6th. It's going through uh, committee hearings now with um, public hearings coming up on the 3rd and the 17th. Um, I would look out for a revised public calendar in the next day or two um, to see what will be considered by city council. 
What I'm pushing for in that budget is a total increase of 1.098%. And adding um, staff support to our public health department due to all of the standard, the industry protocols that folks will have to reopen under and make sure that we're clear, especially around, we have staffing for food inspections. And the other part was to add um, staffing to planning to go after those grants. And the idea with the grants, um, one, they take a lot of people power uh, to apply for and administer, but those grants would be looking at projects like um, uh, public infrastructure around sewer and water where we have a huge deadline for state and federal um, uh, permitting. Overall, I mean, saying that I'm looking for grant money um, to check off the box on projects rather than staff that we need to get done as a city to prevent further deferred maintenance and take care of as many things we can internally or through a grant. That said, um, if the budget goes through the way that I've asked, and it's to city council to approve the appropriation of those monies, in September, um, I have asked President Conniff on the city council and finance committee chair, um, Rist, to schedule another round of budget hearings, just like we're doing now. So every month, the city council and the public will get, um, a year-to-day statement of what the city has spent, what it's received, what it's waiting for reimbursement, where our grant money are, is. Um, so the public and the city council knows every single month how we're doing. In September or October, depending on when the state budget passes, um, we will, I, I've asked for all new budget hearings uh, to go over the budget and take a really strong, not just like, oh, this is how we're doing, really take a hard look at where we are. And I'm hoping by the fall, I'll have some idea of just how bad that state revenue picture looks like, just what the challenges are with local revenue, um, and make adjustments from there. Because around the time in the fall, we'll start, we'll have our recap to start setting our tax, um, our tax rates. We also have the positive effects of the stabilization accounts that, that I put together that will help keep the taxes down a little bit. And I think we'll be able to make some really strong decisions for the second half of our fiscal year, um, which is, you know, ends on June 30th. So um, those are the, that's, I don't know, those are my hopes and that's my plan going forward. And it, it could vary, um, you know, at any minute, if depending on what we do or don't get from uh, the state and federal government. Um, so far, we have not, had to deficit spend to meet our COVID expenses. And I feel very sure that the COVID expenses that, that are out there that we're listing and we'll ask for reimbursement, I believe, I strongly believe that they're valid expenses. I just hope that um, the federal government comes through with a 75% match. And then the 25% match that is local will use CARE Act money and not use general fund money in the city. That was long, but. That's where we are. All right, uh, this next question is from the chat and Louise Jacob would like to know, Mayor and Speaker briefly touched on masks. Can you both expand? This is a matter of much concern to many powerless residents. Can, yeah. what can we expect from businesses? Any coordination? What is the city's position and any enforcement? Um, so, Mo, I don't know if you want to start with expanding on just what you're hearing from businesses. It sounds like they have concerns around masks and face coverings as well, um, or, or any guidance maybe for this, the businesses would like. And then I can, I can take the second part of the question or answer it as well. Well, I think that um, the, the, the feedback that I did get was as they were more concerned about the general public coming into their space and, and perhaps not having their masks on. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that's really do. it, you know, and then, um, you know, and if someone doesn't have their mask on, then what, you know, nobody wants to be in a position where yeah. the situation can get mm -hmm. more than what it needs to be. So on the city side of it, so face coverings, you know, masked face coverings, so your, your nose and your mouth, 
right, being covered. Um, when, when we, as we're seeing our crucial public health metrics go down, right, it is, it is scientifically proven that the reason why that's going down is because folks are washing their hands, they're staying apart, they're staying home, and they're covering their, their nose and their mouth. Like that is so directly correlated, we have to remember that. It will not be a vaccine that extinguishes alone this pandemic. It will be our behavior, each individual person's behavior, to stay apart, to stay home, to wash your hands, cover your nose, cover your mouth. Like it's that easy. Um, for how that translates into the public and public enforcement, we're doing a lot of education. We're coordinating with the police and with the fire, as well as public health departments and businesses. I think that you look at um, Big E's in town, that's a really great example. They're very clear about if you're coming into their, their premise to, to shop, you're welcome to do so, but you gotta have a mask on. And that starts as you're walking into the, into the premise. Mo, did you wanna jump in? I did. I, I just wanted to add that we have been sharing with um, our members and the general public and businesses at large that the state has um, templates and the, the advisory yeah. board had put together, as yeah. you know, because you are a member of that, yeah. um, yeah. templates and signage that you can download and you can put up um, yeah. explaining what it is that's expected as people are starting to come into your space. So that's been, um, we have sent that out. Yeah. to our members and um, you know and 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 our mailing list at large and it's on our website also so hopefully right. folks have seen that and they will I'm pretty sure they are I mean they're all very wanting to do things the right way and as far as the you know private businesses right like a biggies like um, Walgreens or whatnot I would encourage or and and we're working with businesses put the expectations. I mean, it's like, it's like going to a concert, right? And the back of the count, at the back of that ticket, it says that the owner of the venue has the right to ask you to leave, that this ticket is a license, not a right to come into a concert or to a restaurant or to a pharmacy. I, I can't stress that enough. So to use those templates and say the expectation is if you don't have shirts on, if you don't have shoes on, if your face is not covered, you get no service. And as you're walking into that place, so for, for private businesses, I'm strongly um, encouraging them to download those templates and take that position right up front on the doors of the, um, on, on the doors of your premise, very, um, you know, for the, the customers to know. On the other side of it, employees, must wear masks. And that's where public health changes. So if we are going to permit a business to be in, in business, they have to have a safety plan. And, and if they're not going to wear a mask, then we need to see shielding. We need to see a variety of other things that ensures that um, they are not in direct contact. They're further than six feet from other employees and the public. Mm -hmm. That said, well, yes. Well, I just wanted to also um, interject that the advisory, um, the reopening advisory board has also put together a resource list of vendors. So mm -hmm. where businesses can purchase um, their supplies from that they're going to be required to have. Yeah. So they have resources and things that they can't find them readily. They can use right. this. So that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't want to keep going on this. I want to make, I see the chat and, and I don't know if Louise had a follow-up question or clarification. I saw that. So I, I wanted to be respectful. Is, is Louise, are you getting the information you need for my answer or am I missing the mark? Oh, oh you Here, I'll. Hold on, hold on. Okay, hi. Oh. We there? Hi, Louise. Go ahead. Right. Um, somewhat missing the mark. The issue seems, the concern seems to be among some residents and customers, or would-be customers at the moment. Yeah. 
that the stores have these very nice pictures out, uh, sorry, signs yeah. outside, yeah. all very sweet and, you know, everything else. Yeah. But some people don't read them. Some stores do have staff, some don't. We're right. asking, um, and when you get customers who are non-compliant right. or who are yeah. conspicuously non-compliant, I'm not talking about somebody for dads, there have yeah. been a few instances. Yeah. And I mean, this would impact, I think, Chamber because, um, you know, people are deciding for that about going, but it's already a problem with some of the essential businesses. And that's mm -hmm. where I'm asking. I mean, it's a hard thing, I realize. It's going to be harder. Yeah. Things like the small businesses on um, Carter Street. Well, well, they're talking differently. They seem more on top of it, but some of the necessities, mm -hmm. it's a real problem. Um, so and, can I, they, I, and can the council, I don't know, help, um, yeah. you know, help them, maybe yeah. give them, out, encourage them to have somebody on the, at the front door, give masks yeah. in case some, just, be a bit more active than just the signs. That's really the bottom of it. So if anyone in the public has specific concerns, especially about an essential business in that situation, Louise, please give a call to our um, health department. Leave a voicemail, email at health at estamptonma.gov and, and we can get out there and do some education with that business, right? So say, look, this is, this is a concern. The, the signs on the door are cute, but we mean it um, because they're licensed businesses. I love the, yeah, cute. I, I mean, I get it. And you walk in and, and say, this is what you need. This is actually how you need to walk the talk. And, and the health department is happy to do that. I mean, we, um, we're going to always take the um, position that a business needs education before we get to enforcement and fees. We don't want to have to find, but if we need to, it is public health. I mean, these are people's lives um, and they have to follow the guidelines. I also would be concerned too about putting employees and businesses in a position where they're enforcers. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a really hard position for them to be in. So to be able to call a, the um, health department is a good step or, or, or somewhere. I'm not sure who I mean, the health department can enforce. I mean, the health, the health department is not going to respond in the moment. Um, right. I mean, maybe they will. I, I shouldn't say that. I, I guess if they're in the area, they could. Um, but also, I would encourage or, or have businesses remember or even post that. I mean, I guess you can post too much information. If someone's not complying with the terms of service in your private business and you don't want them there because they're not, like you're saying that, then you call the police. That's trespass. You know, that's not an employee having to confront. It's like, you don't have a face covering on. You will not, you're not going to be served here. Please leave the premise. And when someone says no, that's trespass. And you, you call the police. I mean, and do I hope that that happens? A ton? I don't. I mean, I don't know that I don't necessarily see that necessarily. I mean, yes, it could and, and will it more than likely here and there, but I don't see that as being a consistent big problem because I think that the community as a whole yeah. demonstrates their respect for each other by complying with these things right. because it's really more out of the concern for each other. So, I mean, the, the, you know, wearing a mask protects the person you. that's wearing the mask, right? So you're wearing, you know, I mean, it's, it's a funny twist um, on, you know, rights, but, but for private businesses, it's, it's really clear. You set the terms of service to the public and the public decides not to respect that. It can be a trespass. Um, I am concerned with Louise's comments around essential businesses. And that, that's something, I mean, we really want to know um, in my office and in the health department to, to do some education with that business ASAP to, I mean, because an essential business is exactly that, an essential business. People need, people might not have the choice to go to someone else. All right, uh, this next question from the chat comes from Peter Marks. Given the announcement yesterday from School Commissioner Riley, when can we 
have the superintendent be on call with you or a separate call to share thoughts on this? Yeah, we're, I mean, um, Superintendent LeClaire was on once and, um, and as soon as the full guidance comes out about if there are summer offerings and what fall can begin to look like, she's, you know, she's ready to go. Um, she is waiting for more guidance. I'm, I'm hoping, you know, obviously, you know, it's easy to say, oh, those are schools and, you know, it's not, but, but as a city, we need to be prepared to support them. Um, I would like to know, mm -hmm. as, as well as the superintendent, exactly what we'll be expecting in the fall. So we can, we can apply for that grant money to get it, to get it done for our, for our kids. But absolutely, Peter, we'll, we'll get the superintendent back on here. Absolutely. All right, I don't see any more questions in the chat, but if there's anybody who would like to unmute themselves and ask their question, uh, and oh, follow up from Peter. Yeah. Can you please have the Zoom meetings for all meetings be hyperlinked on the website? Some are and some are not. It would be much easier to simply click the hyperlink yeah. to join a meeting than to have to write all the information down to first join. I, I agree. And it, it's, a, yes, we're trying to figure out, get consistency. A lot of the, the meetings run um, on their own and we're trying to, to kind of, uh, lasso all of the meetings and get those links so you can go to one page and just click 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 or click to a separate page and it has everything listed um it's a great idea and we trying to to, to do it um i think especially without in-person meetings you know um it should be as convenient as possible so people can access the um the content yes thank you peter All right. Any Other questions? Else? Oh, sorry, Mayor. No, I was going to say anything else. Uh, I just want to just go through the. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, so I have a couple of of just the questions that I've gotten over the last week, and if they spark questions, clarifications, please let us know in the chat. Um, so I had a couple of, of concerns from parents about um, preschool programming at Maple Street School and it not being full time next year. Um, that started in one, I would encourage, um, I guess there was some chat on Facebook. I'm, I'm not on Facebook, um, so I'm not sure exactly, but thank goodness one, um, uh, a parent reached out and I connected them with Superintendent LeClaire around the preschool program and enrollment um, that affected the decision of how those services will be structured um, next year. Um, and it had to do with, with enrollment. Of course, every department's budget is tight, um, but I do wanna be clear that the number of children enrolling in that service for next year has gone down a lot and, I mean, and the, the school the principal, Judy Averill, as well as uh, the um, student service director, Sarah Mochek, worked with the superintendent to, to craft the most services for the kids that have enrolled. Uh, so that was one question. I, I got it and I wanted to get it out there. Um, also, we had, um, oh, I lost my, bu um, building inspections. So building inspections or build, I'm sorry, building permits. Um, our building inspector, Joe Mezwar, is working through the backlog for when um, permits were being held. Uh, so I know folks want to get things going and uh, there are a lot of pools and fences and shed permits right now. Um, and he's working through those and working through the bigger projects in uh, the city. So he's almost caught up. Um, and I would just ask people to have patience. If you are doing a home improvement project, either through a contractor or yourself, remember there is a self-certification attestation page that is where you fill out your permit form um, that you will take the proper safety procedures and you have to sign off on that. Um, so please make sure when you submit a building permit that you also have that form um, so we can process as soon as possible. Um, for bigger projects, 
uh, like what you see at One Ferry Street or on Route 10, the River Valley um, Co-op that's starting to be built and road work, there are longer safety plans that must be put together by the contractors just from the size and the complex nature of those projects that need to be submitted as well. So if anybody had questions about those safety provisions, you can go to the building inspector's webpage and you can take a look at those and you can also take a look at the self-attestation form uh, that you need to submit with your building permit, okay? So, so part of the building permit process is, of course, your fee, your application, but also that checklist that you will be safe with the work having done um, on your home or your, on your business. Um, so I, I wanted to make sure you get um, that out. Um, if folks are having difficulty getting through to people or departments in City Hall, they can always email mayor at easthamptonma.gov or call my office directly at 413-529-1470 and we will track the person down. Um, people are slowly starting to come back into the city offices to work. Um, the health agent um, with our buildings operation team has been building out schedules um, for each department so folks can get into their office, prepare for year end, but also have direct access to all the materials they need. Not everything is electric. So you'll see um, more folks coming in uh, to City Hall. City Hall itself and all public buildings are, are, remain still closed to members of the public. So if you have business um, that needs to be done face to face with a city employee, or you need to set up a phone call, uh, please contact that department directly and we can make arrangements for um, that conversation or service to be provided. Uh, right now, I plan to keep city buildings closed to the public through June with a reassessment um, the last week of June about next steps forward and public. Um, needless to say, public buildings are very high touch um, and to keep them clean all the time, every time somebody comes in and out um, is near impossible, not to mention the issues with uh, public spaces such as kitchens, um, counters and bathrooms. Uh, it, my, my focus or my thought behind this is I need to keep our public employees safe and as healthy as possible and keeping the public out of those buildings for now um, is important. We, we really don't want to get anybody sick in City Hall or our first responders, water, sewer, schools, um, as we're rebuilding to reopen. We need, we need our team as healthy as it possibly can be and no one, no city employee wants to be the cause of an infection to a member of the public. The curve is flattening because we are staying home and we're self-isolating and we're washing our hands and we're covering our nose and our mouth. I mean, the data shows that, and that is true no matter if you work in city hall or you're walking to the pond. Um, there are all chances that you may be interacting with a member of the public that you're not expecting. So to always cover up, make it a part of your wardrobe, it's, it's really important. Um, folks will be wearing masks in City Hall, so as they move about the building to get their job done, um, they will be masked and lower transmission rates within the building. Um, any comments or, or closing remarks you would like to make, Mo? Um, no, just, you know, let's, um, yeah. let's do what we all need to do so that we can get this done the right way so that we don't have to re-experience these extremes again in 2020 yeah. or ever. <laughs> ever, right. No, I agree. Um, the advise, the reopening advisory board on the state level, we meet today. Um, I would encourage if folks want to know what's going on or what those industry specific protocols look like, the state is adding new ones all the time and into phase two and phase three and phase four. Um, so you can know what to expect there's still opportunity to provide comment on those protocols. If you have a question about those protocols, there are some options to get answers right from the state. They're happy to answer. They have a hotline set up. Um, the Division of Labor Standards has email and a phone. So, you know, call and, and see, give good consideration of what we're doing on the city level. I'd love to hear your feedback. 
I know local um, businesses uh, rely on Mo and vice versa, and I encourage people to, to reach out as well. Yes, Mo. I just wanted to add, you know, I, I would love it if, if folks would like to receive our information that we've yeah. been putting out. Please go to the website. It's easthamptonchamber.org, and you can sign up for that newsletter um, to be on that mailing list. And I would love to be able to share that with you. And if you've got questions about anything um, regarding the business community or businesses or, you know, you're a business owner, I may not have that answer for you right off the bat, right. but I will find it for you. Um, or help you point you in a direction where you can get that. Great. Thank you so much, Mo. Um, oh, thanks for and, having me. Yeah. So I've got two big follow-ups. Um, one, to round up all the Zoom links um, for the meetings and get them into one place on the website. And two, um, schedule a town hall that features Superintendent LeClaire again as she gets more clarity of what happens next for schools this summer and also the fall. So stay tuned for both. Um, and again, if there are any comments or questions from this town hall or any other, please email me at mayoreasthamptonma.gov or give me a call, 413-529-1440. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, and Oh, I just saw a clap. Oh, that's great. I always wondered what those were for in Zoom. Excellent. Um, thanks, Erica. Uh, and uh, oh, and a thumb up. Wow. I, nice. I learned something new. Oh, another Yay. one. That's great. Um, I, I'm going to have to practice so I can use those the next time. Um, but thank you, everybody, and Louise, um, for tuning in. Spread the word about these. If there's somebody else you want to see on this town hall or get a panel, I'm thinking of doing some with the city councilors or department heads. Um, let me know. Give me ideas. This, this hour, it's a town hall. It's really it's your town hall. So I want to make sure you hear what you want to hear and I'll get you answers. Please stay home if you can. If you go out, cover your nose, cover your mouth, wash your hands, stay apart. Have a great week. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. Bye. Thank you, Mo. Thank you, everybody uh, Thanks, who is Mom. here participating and attending. I want to quickly remind everybody that uh, this meeting will be rebroadcast uh, on our channel and on our YouTube page, just like every virtual town hall that we've had since this began. So thank you very much, everybody, and we will see you next week. Take care.